today we're doing a thing that almost no one's asked for, which might seem a bit odd, and I guess it is, but I bought one of these because Curiosity finally got the better of me. And by one of these, I mean Intel's Core Ultra 5 225 processor, and I went with the F model because, well, that seemed appropriate for this content. Anyway, 12 months ago now, Intel quietly squeaked out a range of locked non-K Core Ultra processors and the cheapest of which is the 225F, and it currently retails for $160 US. So about $30 cheaper than AMD's Ryzen 5 9600X, but with this one, you're getting 10 cores, 6P cores, and then 4E cores. So, what is the deal with the 225F? Well, before we get to that, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their Aorus Radeon RX 9070 XT Elite, one of the most feature-packed 9070 XTs on the market, and arguably the best looking, thanks to the RGB halo design, a triple ring lighting effect that provides unique visuals. But the Aorus Elite isn't just a flashy looking graphics card, it packs a massive vapor chamber cooler that allows it to sustain the highest core clocks of any 9070 XT that we've tested and we've tested pretty much all of them. This resulted in some of the best out-of-the-box performance, and combine that with the strong feature set, which includes dual BIOS support, massive aluminium backplate with pass-through area, dual HDMI outputs, ARGB lighting, a GPU support that includes a wide range of adjustment, and you have a real winner, which is why we recommend checking out Gigabyte's Aorus Radeon RX 9070 XT Elite via the link in the video description. Okay, so admittedly, it's probably not a good sign that we're only bothering to look at the 225F now, almost a year after it was first introduced, but there is a reason for that. Well, two main reasons, really. First and foremost, no one's really asked for it. There's been virtually zero interest in this product from our audience, so a little less demand than what we've seen from the K-SKU parts. Anyway, when compared to the K-SKU parts like the 245K, the 225F still packs 6P cores, though they are clocked 6% lower, when comparing boost clocks and then 21% lower for the base clocks. The E core count has been reduced from 8 to just 4, and because the Core Ultra series dropped hyperthreading, there's just 10 cores and 10 threads in total. The E core clock frequency has also been reduced by 4% for the boost clocks and then 25% for the base clocks. And these clock speed reductions have reduced the base TDP from 125 watts down to 65 watts, while the max turbo TDP has dropped from 159 watts down to 121 watts, so a 24% reduction there. Finally, the smart cache capacity has been reduced by 17%, down from 24 megabytes to 20 megabytes. Now, when it comes to the price, the 225F has an MSRP of $221 US, but back when it was first released, you could expect to pay more like $250 US, which was a truly horrible price for this part, so it makes sense that none of you are interested in it. Even so, I had planned to buy one and check it out, but I ended up being preoccupied with other content and just never got around to testing out Intel's latest budget offerings. Anyway, just one month after its release, the price was dropped to $230 US, so technically still above MSRP, but then four months later, in June, it dropped down to $220 US, and then it tanked to $200 US in late July before hitting its current price of $160 US in early October, where it's remained since. At this price, it's certainly one of Intel's better budget options, coming in just $20 over the 12400F, and $20 under the 12600K, with parts like the 14400F priced at $200. From AMD, there is the 7500F at $145, the 7600X at $180, and the 9600X at $190. So I'm keen to see how the 225F stacks up against those parts in our gaming benchmarks. But before that, I'll quickly go over some productivity results. Just to be clear, this isn't a detailed review of the Core Ultra 5 225F. We've already done that for the 245K. I'm more interested in the gaming performance of this budget CPU. So if anything, consider this a mini review with a heavy focus on gaming. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with the Cinebench single core performance, we see that the 225F produced a score of 123 points, placing it roughly on par with the 14600K and 7600X, and that made it 10% slower than the 245K, which isn't really a particularly great sign for gaming, given that the 245K isn't the best gaming CPU. 
Then when it comes to multi-core performance, the 225F fizzles out, which is another wiring sign because if anything, the saving grace for the Core Ultra series has been the value it delivers for productivity tasks. But with the 225F coming in slightly slower than the Ryzen 5 7600X, that is a very worrying sign. And given what we just saw in Cinebench, it comes as little surprise to see that the 225F is only able to match the performance of the 12600K in the 7-zip file manager compression benchmark. And sadly, the decompression performance is even worse, coming in 11% slower than the old 12600K, making it 20% slower than the Ryzen 5 7600X. And multi-core performance is probably most important for the majority of gamers when it comes to shader compilation. But even here, the 225F is pretty underwhelming, certainly not bad, but only able to roughly match the performance of the 6-core Ryzen processors. Okay, so time for the gaming benchmarks, and we'll start with Rainbow Six Siege. And damn are these results. A little bit tragic. Sure, over 300 FPS on average is mighty impressive performance, but relative to the competition, it is very underwhelming. Firstly, we're talking about just a 6-8% uplift over the 12400F, and that meant the 14600K was 27% faster when using the medium settings, and 23% faster with the Ultra Plus settings. Not only that, but the Ryzen 5 7500F was 27% faster with the medium settings, and then 32% faster when using Ultra Plus. The results in Marvel Rivals are better, but even so, the 225F is thoroughly unimpressive once again, beating the 12400F by just an 11% margin, using the medium settings and then 12% with the ultra settings. And that meant the 14600K was 15% faster, while the 9600X was 20% faster using the medium settings and then 12% faster with the ultra settings. Assassin's Creed Shadows is a heavily GPU limited title when using modern CPUs, and this largely applies even with the 225F, though it did come in slightly behind the 12400F by a few frames, but overall very similar performance. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered saw the 225F throughput 162 FPS using the medium settings, and that made it just 9% faster than the 12400F, while the older 14600K was 13% faster. Then we have the Ryzen 5 7500F, which was 7% faster with the medium settings, and then just 3% faster when using the very high settings. Testing with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, we find very disappointing results from the 225F, just 7 to 8% better than the 12400F. And this meant the 14600K was 11% faster using the medium settings, and then a massive 23% faster with the ray tracing ultra preset. The 7500F was also 18% faster with the medium settings and then 15% faster with the ray tracing ultra preset. Next up we have Counter-Strike 2, and with it another set of disappointing results for the Core Ultra 5 225F, as it was only up to 12% faster than the 12400F across this data set. And that made the 14600K 15% faster, while the 7500F was 28% faster with the medium settings and 22% faster when using the very high preset. Space Marine 2 is a very CPU demanding game, which is why we see little to no difference in performance between the medium and ultra settings. That's because the results are entirely CPU bound. The good news is the 225F isn't terrible here. The bad news though, it's not particularly good either, offering just 8-10% to better performance than the old 12400F. The 7500F was also 4-5% to faster, certainly not a big margin, but it is a previous generation budget part. It's also worth noting how impressive the 14600K is here, especially with the Ultra preset beating the 9600X by an 8% margin. The 225F performed well enough in The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, matching the performance of the 7500F, so although that made it faster than the 12400F, the 14600K was still up to 13% faster, though the Core i5 processor was also faster than AMD's entire 6-core range, at least the models that we've tested here. The Spider-Man 2 results are interesting. Firstly, when using the medium quality preset, the 225F looks great, maxing out performance at 187 FPS to match the 9600X and 14600K, 
making it 10% faster than the 7500F. So then that makes this the first real win over the budget Ryzen 5 processor. But when we switch to the more CPU demanding ultimate ray tracing settings, the 225F starts to struggle with weaker than expected 1% lows while only matching the average frame rate of the 7500F. Again, the 14600K was impressive here, beating the 9600X by a 9% margin and the 225F by a 16% margin. The 225F was back to delivering disappointing results in Mafia the Old Country using the more CPU limited medium settings. The 225F was 15% faster than the 12400F, but that wasn't enough to catch the Ryzen 5 processors or the 14600K. The 7500F, for example, was 16% faster, so a big performance difference there. That said, switching to the GPU limited EPIC settings allowed the 225F to match the Ryzen 5 processors. The ACC results are also very disappointing. Here, the 225F was only able to match the 12400F, making the 7500F almost 30% faster in both the medium and EPIC quality tests. Finally, we have Baldur's Gate 3, and this is a particularly bad title for the 225F, as it managed to come in slower than even the 12400F, making the 7500F 12% faster when using the medium settings, and then just 6% faster with the ultra settings. Okay, so here's the 12 game average, calculated using the GeoMean, and as you can see, when it comes to gaming performance, the 225F leaves a lot to be desired from a current generation processor, priced even at $160 US. When compared to the old 12400F, we're looking at a mere 7-9% to performance improvement on average, depending on the quality settings, and that means the 7500F was 13% faster with the medium settings and then 9% faster using the ultra settings. You're also looking at 17% better performance on average from the 14600K, or up to 24% greater performance with the 9600X. I'm really not sure who has worse timing, Intel or me. I guess it doesn't really matter, but it's fair to say neither of us did too well in this one. I can't imagine Intel sold too many 225Fs, or 225s at this point, and with DRAM pricing going through the roof, they're unlikely to pick up in demand. And therefore, I don't imagine there are many of you actually watching this video. So unless Intel drops this thing to $100 US or less and DDR5 pricing falls through the floor, then I'd say we're both screwed on this one. Anyway, let's not focus on that too much. In fact, I'd rather we forgot about it altogether. So swiftly moving on, what else can I say about the Core Ultra 5 225F? Mm, not a lot, I'm afraid. As I've already alluded to, Ignoring the current DRAM crisis, even at $160 US, the 225F just isn't a compelling product. For anyone, really. Which explains why, after nearly a year on shelves, I can count the number of requests I've received to check this product out on one hand. No one's picking up the 225F as an in-slot upgrade, because if you already own an LJ1851 motherboard, you presumably already have a Core Ultra CPU, and if that's the case, it'll be better than the 225F. So the only potential customers for the 225F are budget builders looking at performing a platform upgrade or building an entirely new PC from the ground up. If you're looking at doing either one of those things and are happy doing so while investing in a dead platform, there have been much better alternatives from Intel in this price range available over the past 12 months, like the Core i5-14600K, which was selling for as little as $175 US just a week or two ago. Oddly, that part appears to be back up at $210 US, but even there, I'd probably buy it over a 225F. The best budget option for gamers, though, is still the Ryzen 5 7500F, which is still very cheap in a number of regions, including here in Australia, where you can currently have it delivered to your door for $210 Australian, whereas the 225F, on the other hand, is $260 Australian, while the 14600K is $360 and the 9600X $370. So if we didn't have access to the 7500F here in Australia, the 225F would actually be a lot more appealing as the 9600X costs a little over 40% more, whereas in the US it's just a 20% premium. In short though, for gamers, the 7500F was 13% faster on average according to our medium quality data, while the 9600X was 24% faster, and both are supported on a current generation platform with an upgrade path. 
so that makes the 225F a really tough sell. For those interested in multi-core slash productivity performance, the 225F at best matches the 9600X, though it is generally a bit slower. So that's the 225F in a nutshell. It needs to be significantly cheaper to even consider purchasing, just like every other core ultra processor that we've looked at to date. And on that disappointing note, I am going to end this video. Um, if you liked it, give it a like, subscribe. Probably not going to be doing any more uh, Core Ultra 5 content for a while. I don't think there'll be too much more demand for looking at the other models like the 235 and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, you can subscribe for other content because we'll no doubt do that. And we also have the join button or Patreon. Sign up to either one of those things. We'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server, there's monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.